In my uh, previous video, if you are watching it sequentially, uh, I had spoken about why, whether you should pick your own stocks and I had said that uh, both Graham and uh, Buffett had uh, made money from one stock called Geeko and that company does not fit into their uh, regular value uh, model at all but it was a good business model. Uh, Geeko used to sell insurance only to government uh, employees. So, government employee meant a person who has gone through a selection process and who would not, uh, who just live his life normally. You didn't need anything great except saying that I will sell only to uh, government employees. I will not sell to anybody. So, in fact, it used to be called government in employees insurance company Geeko, right? So, it did not fit into their uh, norms of typical value investing, but both invested. A, a lot of money was made by both Graham and uh, uh, Buffett from so called growth companies, and the latest example being uh, Apple. So, you can call yourself a value investor and say, Oh, I see a lot of value in the growth that Apple is going to do. That's fine. So, these are interchangeable words don't fall into traps, right? If somebody says, I don't believe in diversification, the main money making machine for uh, Mr. Buffett is Geico and Geico is insurance and insurance believes in diversification. So, if I run an insurance company, I would want to insure lives in America, in Africa, in Asia, in South, all over the world, in Europe because I that is the best way to reduce my risk. If something were to happen in one country, I would still be earning premiums from other countries to be able to uh, pay off the claim. So, the very basis of making money is buying a company which does not fit into my typical value norms and whose base essence is diversification. So, this is how, this is what happens. So, you have to read between the lines and understand what they have done. And this, uh, this work has been done for us by uh, <coughs> Mark. Howard Marks and uh, some of those things are worth reading. So, he says, uh, I mean of course, he, he says over 56 years Buffett has achieved his great success in handful of growth stocks including Apple. Uh, Bill Miller achieved his success by investing in Amazon in 1997. Obviously, he made a lot of money in that if he's still holding on, right. I think the secret from this like what uh, Howard Marx says is not about uh, being able to discover a great company, but when you uh, hit a great company and you realize it's a, it's a dull boring company which gives you year on year compounded growth and dividend and you don't mind holding on for 20, 30, 40 years, then it will give you good returns. So, for me, it has been say the Colgate, the Nestle, the Coromandel, the Cholamandalam, HDFC Bank, HDFC Limited. These are dull boring companies which have given me very good returns. I have held on to something like Hero Honda for a long time and sold. I bought uh, Infosys and sold in 3 months and I bought and uh, sold Hero Honda in 25 years. I bought and hold, I am holding uh, uh, HDFC Limited since uh, 40 years. I have been holding HDFC Bank since uh, about 27 years, right. So, sometimes you make money by selling, sometimes you make money by holding. So, have I made mistakes? Yes, of course, I have made mistakes like I have sold uh, MRF at uh, about 65,000 or 64,000 then watch it go to 90,000. So, these things will happen, you will sell, but my cost of uh, MRF was 800 rupees. So, you need to know that also at some stage you say that's enough, I have to take my profits off the table and so sometimes you do that also. I realize that you don't need to go and discover the new MRF or anything, but having bought it you should uh, be able to understand that it is worth holding. So, now let me get into the definition of value investing by Howard Marks. That is something which is very beautiful, so I think I should share it. I am going to read this, so I need my specs and uh, he began, his January memo has this definition of value investing and it is a very, very comprehensive definition. Not that others have not defined it, but this is a good definition by a great writer. Value investing is one of the key disciplines in the world of investing. So, first of all realize it is a track, 
it's something which you should do it consists of quantifying what something is worth intrinsically not that it is easy for people like us because we start our valuation journey from uh, net profit so if there's no net profit i do not know how to value based primarily on its fundamental cash flow generating capabilities and buying it if its price represents a meaningful discount from that value cash flows are estimated as far into the future as possible and discounted back to the present value using a discounted rate uh, which is usually the treasury rate he calls it the us treasury for us it would be the indian treasury plus a premium to compensate for their uncertain nature there are a lot of common valuation metrics like ratio of price to sale or price to earnings but they are largely subsumed by uh, the discounted cash flow uh, method this is the way you do the valuation but i can find thousands of reports today which are really a price to imagination ratio i mean so it does not fit into my definition of value investing and i still hold on to some of those shares because i wouldn't know what else to buy because others which i look at are perhaps much worse than this so and i don't think even uh, ben graham could have defi- defined uh, value investing better or buffett could have defined it better that brings us to what graham and buffett actually did they actually bought a lot of shares which were growth but they kept on altering what they meant by value and for very many people we believe that oh they are value investors yes they are value investors but the big money is something which they made on growth investing if, if you made money in uh, apple and that is what sustained you for the last couple of years and that's value by any stretch of uh, imagination Apple would not have fitted into a value investing uh, criteria. You made money. After I make money, I never question whether what I did was right, right? Because the most important thing is to make money. So you make your theories, you buy a share, and the share goes up for completely different reason. Exactly like uh, GameStop, right? So it goes up for a different reason. You make your money, you get out. Like Vedanta, I bought it hundred bucks because I thought. there is no way that anybody is giving it for a buyback at 87 now it is 230 rupees and i am convincing myself oh there is a big metal uh, trade which is happening metal bull run which is happening and therefore it is a great buy well completely different reason why i bought it and completely different reason that it is going up but so be it right uh Howard Marks mentions very nicely that uh, Graham once admitted that he made uh, more money in Geico than all his other investments combined. Let me repeat: Graham once admitted over his entire career he made more money in Geico uh, than he made in all other companies combined. Geico was not traditionally value investment. it was a model for selling insurance and that's the kind of company in which uh, buffett also made money what happened was uh, graham lost a lot of money during the depression and buffett was actually born a year after the depression started he was born in 1930 but graham lost a lot of money for himself and for his uh, investors during the uh, depression and that must have hurt him a lot once you do something like that the chances are you will keep on booking profit saying you never know when things can go wrong so all that impacts you right so when you buy a share and you are personality is such that let me sell half of it and book the profit because you have made losses in the past so you will do that and that is nothing wrong and there are some others who will just buy and hold and make money so you bought let's say you bought wipro in 1980 and you held on till today and that is worth uh, 800 crores or 700 crores it does not matter how much you lost in all other shares so that is exactly what happened to buffett and exactly what happened to graham right they made so much money in geco which gave them 30% cagr over long periods of time and uh, that it it didn't matter whether what you thought whether you are a value investor or whether you are not a value investor whether you are a growth investor you made money and after you make money nobody tests your theories they just say wow this works for him right so exactly like that 
I am unable to analyze my portfolio into whether I bought it for growth, whether I brought it bought it for value, and why I held on for so long. And over a long period of time, it has made money. If I sit with my portfolio and year on year or even quarter on quarter, if I check it with the index, maybe I wouldn't have beaten the index in many times. But overall, from seventy eighty five or eighty six till now. It, there's a reasonable measure that I met all my goals, and to me, beyond that, it doesn't really matter. So don't get too much into whacking yourself, saying I'm underperforming the index or things like that. As long as you are having fun and you are picking up good stocks and you are holding for a long period of time, and therefore you are saving some money, which you would have otherwise paid, and panicking or or somebody declaring a dividend and you paying tax on dividend. so there are various reasons why you would go into a uh, into a mutual fund i have a mutual fund portfolio and i know one thing if i am in the growth option i pay tax only when i withdraw whereas in my regular portfolio i pay tax every year when i get a dividend it's a recent phenomena but again dividends were inefficiently taxed at 28% in the hands of the company right so when i am in the mutual fund at least i avoid the tax which i have to pay what the mutual and the mutual fund doesn't pay income tax right that is those are the some of the advantages of going through a mutual fund and not through a pms so you have advantages of buying equity shares directly you have advantages of going to a mutual fund directly you also realize that you can make theories work on those theories and sometimes when those theories go wrong you'll still make money and sometimes when those theories go right you're saying wow this theory is right so once you make a theory and you buy according to it and you hold on to something which is beyond the theory or it actually breaks the theory then you go and revisit your theory and say is something wrong with my theory or should does my theory need any enhancement because ultimately in the market it is about making money it is not about having your theories thank you